That's right. Greetings, fellow armchair Imagineers. Tiki here. And Pi. And Obi and saying hello over there. <laughs> Good talk, buddy. And welcome to Project One of Citrus Dreaming, an armchair Imagineering competition. Folks, I'm assuming that if you're watching it, you're up to date on uh, on what's going on here, but just in case you're not, Pi, give them the rundown. So, Citrus Dreaming, Armchair Imagineering Competition. I give a prompt. The players do something with that prompt. Writing, art, music, all that good stuff. This first one was the Adventureland Adventure. They were supposed to do a new Adventureland for Disneyland Paris. Since this was the first prompt of the competition, there was a lot of freedom. Uh, it gave them a lot of choice to do pretty much whatever they wanted to get warmed up, gel together. Uh, but the guideline I did was New Fancy Land, which was, what was that, two new rides in the restaurant? Mm -hmm. um, but I said, you know, do whatever you'd like. And they both redid the entire park. <laughs> or the entire adventure land. We'll get into it, and yes. I respect it. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's see. I believe that Team Boats turned their project in first, correct? They did, yes. So let's go to them first. Uh, of course, uh, we have the funny thing where Team Boats is the team that did all the Tiki Room-centric stuff, and Team Birds is the team that did all the water-based attractions, which of course. I love just Phenomenal symmetry, <laughs> symmetry there. <laughs> um, also, develop. I loved it. Really quick, I'm going to go over the uh, the new little wrinkle that we've put into the fantasy draft. Since uh, you know, since we're not going to be eliminating for a couple rounds, we figured we'd at least have something to talk about with the fantasy draft. So basically, folks, with the MVP, every round we're going to take the votes live. And we won't do it, we won't count the votes until towards the end of the show. But uh, essentially, what being the MVP means, it's nothing to do with the game mechanics, it's nothing to do with who wins. Unlike So You Want to Be an Imagineer, you don't get uh, an immunity for the next round. It simply affects the, um, the fantasy draft. So essentially, every time that someone from either Pi or I's team gets MVP, we will get a negative point to bank at the end of the season. And those negative points are essentially going to act as the Mario Party stars. Because remember, we're playing this like with golf rules where the goal is to have as few points as possible by the end. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, I, so far, I'm not seeing a lot of votes. So uh, get your votes in. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, so but there's a quiz to it because it is mono red. Oh yes, are are we gonna go with what I <laughs> with what I laid out? I say we keep it a secret. Okay, let's not tell if anyone what happens if mono red wins. <laughs> if mono red wins MVP, which honestly is a pretty likely scenario, <laughs> so um, the only one with votes. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, something will happen. I will say it will negatively affect both Pi and I in our draft, our draft teams. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. All right. So, yeah, team boats. Um, first of all, I, I got to tell you guys, literally that Tiki Room ride, it's almost like you guys pulled an Inception and went into my brain and extracted the exact concept that I've had in my head for, like, over a decade about how that attraction would work. Like everything from uh, everything from setting up like the fake Tiki Room show at the beginning that that then breaks off into a you know into a dark ride portion. Yeah. Moderate red. <laughs> uh yeah, it was uh spectacular. It really was. Yeah. And uh the big thing that I think really sent that project over the edge for me was the music track. Right. Um, I, was gonna I, I think that was I wasn't incredible the way that they did that. But that was Outbound's project. He did a great job with it. 
Uh, give me one second. I'll let you talk about it a little bit more, and I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, so Outbound, coming in hot off the top with that project, with the Tiki Room stuff. Um, I, I don't know. I just really love how you guys incorporated all the Tiki gods into it. Um, I think the scenes flowed very nicely into each other. I oh, yeah. really loved the uh, I really loved the music, like I said. The audio effect, I mean, like you said, really sold it. And I was expecting when I clicked on it to be something I've done. A lot of us have done just like a music playlist, but like cut down right. there the fix the songs and thinking this is a neat accompaniment. And then like two seconds in, the sound effects start kicking in and start going so smoothly with the ride and pace at like the same pace I was reading it too. That, that's the really crazy thing. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic job on that outbound. And speaking of pacing, that was the other thing that stood out with me on the ride was the pacing is uh, like after the volcano, that moment of just silence and peaceful and the lights came up. Or I mentioned in my review, it reminded me of Flight of Passage when you have the moment after the encounter with the big bang oh. And you just have that second to breathe. And not enough attractions do that. They just go from scene to scene to mm -hmm. scene. Really well done. All right. We have Kogios in the chat, who is very much not in the Imagineering community. Uh, Kogios, I have the links to um, Orange. Kogios, Orange Bird can only speak in thought balloons. That's that's lore. That's canon lore. You that's have to, actual uh, Disney canon yeah. since the 1971. <laughs> <laughs> uh so Kogios, I would recommend I, I don't know if you saw it, but I would recommend going into the uh into the video description and I have both of the team's projects laid out for you. So if you want to read and follow along, I would highly recommend that. All right. Um uh and theme park priest, the MVP since it's photographed, like you don't have to have read both teams projects. You can just vote for someone on your team, mm -hmm. but you also don't have to vote for someone on your team. You can vote for the other team. If you read theirs and it's like, Oh no, they were well. I was right. Right. You can vote for whoever the craft is. It's a fun thing that obviously we care very deeply about, but it's not going to affect <laughs> the game itself. <laughs> I think I honestly low-key might care more about it than the game itself, just because I'm very <laughs> invested in it. <laughs> I, do love, I do love a good draft and bit. Well, if like I said, it's, like, it's one of those things where I, I, kept, I kept doing the drafts on the cast assessments for So You Want to Be an Imagineer, but we never actually did anything with them. We never followed through. It would just be the teams would be drafted, and then we'd literally, even at the end of the season, we wouldn't follow through. So I want to keep up to date. Let's do it. All right. Okay, so yeah, obviously the uh, the Tiki Room was a great inclusion here. Um, I, you know, you made a you made a really good point about how I really love how this project flowed. How the more fantastical stuff was on one side, closer to fantasy land, and the more realistic stuff was closer to the Main Street Frontier Land side of things. Yeah, it had really great flow to it, and I was trying to keep up with the brainstorming. But, uh, you know, sometimes miss things. I don't know if that was like a team discussion or if that was Tegan when she was laying out the map or if that was just random luck and they are realizing it happened as I'm saying it now. But a really great flow. For sure, for sure. Um, I do have to criticize one element, though. Mm -hmm. Priest? I'm, I'm sorry, man. I The Joan of Arc thing. It was super duper out of place for me. I feel like, well, I think the big thing that happened with that, because I mean, you know, Theme Park Priest usually is like super strong on what he does. Uh, he was away almost the entire week. Okay. So I think what happened is there was just expecting to be more time at the last minute, and there wasn't, because the write-up is definitely a lot more rushed feeling than his stuff usually is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, no, I was surprised. I mean, I I don't know, though. Honestly, I think even if it was more detailed, I still don't think I would really vibe with it. I just think conceptually it's it's honestly kind of a miss, I've got to admit. Um, for me, I felt there was a real, real bad tone issue 
with, I mean, the story of Joan of Arc is, by all intents and purposes, pretty much a tragedy, by and large. And, like, you don't get that with incorporating a cartoon bird sidekick character into it. Yeah, there's um, some weird tonal issues and clashes. And I feel like you either commit to the historical one and do it like an Epcot ride, which would feel better in like a park like Epcot, or you go fantastical and just do like one story, not the all. It would absolutely work in an, in the France Pavilion, Priest. It absolutely would. I could totally see it working, especially as like counter programming to Ratatouille. I could totally see that working. Um, yeah, Adventureland. Like, I don't know, man. I just. I felt like it was just a very, very loose connective tissue to just the theme of Adventureland. I will say I did appreciate the indie tie-in, um, indie tie-in in all the uh, all the realistic elements of the land. That was a nice yeah. little component to it. I always pull the good scavenger hunt. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, priest. I don't know, man. I just. I, I, you just got to be careful with these religious projects because obviously it's your bread and butter, obviously. But, uh, you know, if it doesn't fit with the prompt, you don't want to force it. And this felt like you were kind of forcing the religious stuff just to have something to do. Where I kind of feel like, especially if you were limited on time, you might have been a little bit better served to just do like, you know, like a quick write up on a restaurant or help with art or something. You know what I mean? I would even go as far as to say I think it could have worked if there was more ideas for the France mini land. But but that was the only big thing in the France mini land. That I think that was the thing that made it feel more like there was other things like the uh, restaurant and the walkthrough. But uh, well, that was the only big thing. It might have been better to save that for another project. But still, and conceptually, I do really like the idea of a Joan of Arc dark ride. I always like the story of Joan of Arc. I think it's an interesting idea. And like I said, yeah. I definitely think it would work better in Epcot. I don't think you give her an animal sidekick. I was I was having a really hard time wrapping my head around that from like a tonal point of view. Uh, but moving on, uh, speaking of the rest of the France land, a little thing I want to shout out. Uh and this is a little detail, but Space Mountain was doing the shops, included a bookstore and library in there. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's great. I would, any other time you have a chance in a theme park to just be like, it's cold outside. Come have tea and a book and wait for your fast pass. <laughs> that's such a Space Mountain idea. Uh, low so key, well. honestly, if that type of thing did exist in a Disney park, I would absolutely take advantage of it. Um... I can't, I, basically when I was uh, doing my most recent Disney trip uh, about a year ago now, I just kind of used going into the Tiki Room as that, you know? It's like if I oh, yeah. if, if I needed to kill some time, if I needed to sit down and eat something, Tiki Room, Tiki Room all the time. Oh yeah, for sure. Tiki Room was usually my go-to too. Either Tiki Room or Chaos of Progress. Mm-hmm. Because my Disney park still has that. Ha ha ha. Take that, oh Disneyland Disney people. Has toad. Ooh. <laughs> <Low. laughs> <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Some might say people moving on if you're on the East Coast. Uh, <laughs> and Country Bears. The, the, that's the trifecta right there. I, I Ever since I started going to Disney World, I, I have always said... Country Bears, People Mover, Carousel of Progress. Those three freaking attractions put that park over the top for me. Oh, yeah. I'm real. This is off topic, so I won't spend much time on it. But I'm really curious how the new Country Bear update's going to be. Because at first I was nervous about it, but I thought, you know what? If I was still a kid, this would be exactly what I wanted. I'm pretty sure there's a journal where I wrote T- Country Bears, but they sing Disney songs in Crown somewhere. <laughs> I am cautiously optimistic about it. I just really hope that it's not just the same Disney songs that keep getting regurgitated in every firework show. Yeah. I think the second... I love Moana. I think the second I hear that same song from Moana, I'm like, okay. Granted, I will say, I am hardcore rooting for Big Al's song to be Let It Go. Hardcore rooting for that. (laughs) 
and just totally just roast that song. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. <laughs> he comes out in like a little Elsa dress that's like obviously too small for him. <laughs> oh, it seems Ongbud has thoughts on that. No. Oh god. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh, anyways, other big thing I want to shout out for uh, Team Boats is the, how connected Tiki Springs is. I mm. always love, my biggest thing with lands is kinetic energy, which is something this team really got. Like there was the uh, balloon flat ride. I forget who wrote that one, so I'm going to scroll down real quick. Uh, outbound, the balloon flat ride in the French land, which added some more life to that area. But the Tiki Springs, you have the boat ride weaving through it. You have uh, the Tiki ride and the boat ride connect with a show scene in the middle, which also connects to the train. Uh, you have the bird flat ride that's spinning. Mm -hmm. It's really so much interconnectivity, so much life, so much movement. I feel like that's something that gets missed in a lot of lands, especially in modern theme parks. Like, even ones that get, like, almost universally praised. Like, you go to, like, Galaxy's Edge or Diagon Alley, and there's, like, Galaxy's one thing Edge that moves in the entire praised? land. What was that? Galaxy's Edge is not universally praised, sir. It's a bit more controversial than Disney, sir. <laughs> From day one, that place has been controversial. <laughs> um, Wizarding World, they, I feel like Wizarding World, they at least have the the interactive wand stuff going for it when it comes to connective stuff. Yeah, a little bit. You have to pay for that one, though. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can still enjoy it, even if yeah. I'm not the one actively sending them off. I will say, though, you have not been to Super Nintendo World, have you? No, I'm waiting Dude. for it. Yeah, I, I mean... If, it sounds exactly it like, to, like my cup of tea. Yeah, when it comes to like ki kinetic energy in theme parks, it it really doesn't get much better than that. It really doesn't. Yeah, and we're getting, and you guys are getting the one with the Yoshi ride too. So that's gonna make you know that's gonna make it all the more oh, yeah. kinetic. All right, seriously, the the Mario Kart queue might be my favorite queue in any theme park attraction, just hands down. I'm so excited. All right, but, uh, on this topic, I love the River Rapids ride. We, I said this about a lot of water rides because there was a lot of water rides on both teams. France has snow for like a good portion of the year, which is why they don't do these. But all the teams kind of like acknowledge that, and I respect them saying, Yeah, we can just turn off the water. <laughs> I don't know how realistic that is. I think one of the teams mentioned a way to do that that a different park uses. Uh, but more than that, I respect just saying, Yeah, we're gonna do it anyways. Because this is meant to be a more of a fun round. Right, right. Honestly, um, the one time that didn't really work for me as far as, like, riding away the weather issue was the Rapids ride. Um, just because I know by, by those rides' very nature, they're a lot more intense in the wet department. Like, like, could you imagine trying to turn off the water on Popeyes, for example? Yeah. <laughs> it just Even would not River Rapids. <laughs> Snow and water, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know, Unc, but it's a little difficult to, to do the water in the snow. So maybe you need to just let it go, like Big Al. Oh Anyways. <laughs> uh, really uh, quick, I don't have a lot to say about it, but I did really appreciate all the indie stuff as far as uh, having a, you know, like a, a lot of different activities that you can do and all the activities yeah. seem pretty varied. The pirate scavenger hunt is one of my favorite things at Magic Kingdom. I think it like it's really slept on, and using that with Indiana Jones was perfect. Perfect, yeah. I'm honestly kind of surprised they haven't done an Indiana Jones scavenger hunt thing before. Right. Uh, oh, and the last thing I want to make sure we shout out: Did you see the Dole Whip page? Did you check? Yes, out I that did. <laughs> I'm I'm just going to real quick flip to it for anyone who missed it. And read the entirety of this project that's credited to no one is <laughs> at question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Dole Whip at the Tiki Juice Bar. Dole Whip. Dole Whip. Whip oh Dole. Dole Whipped. Get it pineapple or mango. Dole Whip. Pineapple emoji. Pineapple emoji. Pineapple emoji. 
That was beautiful, sir. Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing space, but really knowing <laughs> that team, I feel like anyone on the team, you could tell me they did, and I'd be like, yeah, that sounds right. Right. It was right. a great comedic moment. All right. Uh, just going on to the comments here. Um, let's see. Uh, active cameras on the Popeye River raft ride. Yo, where did all the water go? Yeah, seriously, the 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 Popeye ride, I love it, but I've always said it feels more like an attraction that you would have in a water park than a theme park. Just oh, because you ride of, that ride and you're taking the bath. Y- yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> All right. Uh let's see. I agree with LEB. Boats has a true way with wards. <laughs> all right and yeah i agree with a couple people who said it it's 100 percent a tumblr post <laughs> okay so uh is that about it for team boats i think so i'm scrolling through real quick to see if there's anything else i want to shout out or anyone i haven't mentioned i didn't call them out but brea panther and disney warrior did the bird's eye flat ride which i really liked uh I wish there was a little bit more to distinguish it from just a regular Dumbo spinner, but mm. even so, those are great and add a lot to the land. And Walt Wiz was credit with the River Rapids, which, while questionable for France, is a great ride system. It was a fun ride. Yeah, remind me what the theme of the River Rapids was? Uh, it was going through the volcano Mount Pele. Oh, and also, right, the right, climax right. was with the Tiki God Pele, so you saw the scene both from the River Rapids and from the Tiki Room ride. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And that's another thing that I think both teams really did well was the use of space and doing both interiors and exteriors. Yeah, really creative layouts. All right. And orange boat, hearts boats. Presumably the team, but perhaps just the vessel. <laughs> Um, uh, moving on sorry, to birds. Yeah. Boats are done. It's like Muppets fan says. Okay, team birds. All right. I really, this team especially went doing everything, everything. Like, yeah, no, low key. This was a lot. This was a lot. I feel like this was kind of one of those classic, like everything in the kitchen sink kind of projects where I honestly feel like it would have been better served if one of the components just wasn't there. But at the same time, I don't really know what you would cut out of these three components. Like, yeah. Because you need the pirate stuff. I think the pirate stuff really works. I think the pirate stuff helps, like, you know, prop up that attraction. Um, You need the, uh, honestly, the jungle boats, maybe, would be the thing I would cut from this. Um, I think it's tough to say, because I really love both Log (laughs) Booms and Jungle Book. Here's the thing with that attraction for me, though. It was well written, and obviously Monorail Red's artwork in that was freaking phenomenal. Oh yeah, but um, I it was just it was a book report, and that's that was a thing that I mentioned in my review too. Is Muppets fan has a really great like eye for show scenes. Like when they were writing everything, each scene felt real in a way that you don't always see in these kinds of projects. Uh, but there was just it was the, every scene from the movie. I feel like my advice would definitely be to take like a sequence or two you like or something you want to emulate, like an original story, either way, and focus on that and expand on that rather than trying to do everything. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, If you guys aren't familiar with my judging style, um, book report dark rides are going to be, that's going to be one of my main pet peeves, honestly. Um, I, I really... At a certain point, it kind of just becomes white noise reading those kind of projects for me because I literally just feel like I'm reading the plot to the movie. Um, so yeah, just be mindful about that. 
<laughs> yes, the orange bird. Yes. Yeah. It's the um book, the jungle book. But yeah, also the one uh, full book report rides, but especially in a competition like this, where you're just you're not actually riding it, you're just reading it, it makes it less exciting as a read. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Like, Muppet Fan says uh, original IP rides. Muppet Fan, like, you can totally do IP rides. Like, we're not saying don't do IP. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, like, I'm thinking of, uh, honestly, pretty much every Fantasyland dark ride, except for Pinocchio, I feel like does this really well, where it's more about the experience of the story than it is just telling a beat-by-beat you know, recreation of the story, right? Yeah. Like, that's why I was suggesting focus on, like, a specific section of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I think I mentioned, go right from Bare Necessities to I Want to Be Like You and make that the ride. Right, like, right, like, right, like, yeah. Like, experience sequence. No, I mean, yeah, I original story original. also works. Yeah, exactly. I think, uh, I think Frozen Ever After is actually a really good example of that being done well. Yeah, like I have some issues with it as execution, but in theory, at least, I really do like how Frozen Ever After is laid out. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, also, Muppet fan, I'll give you uh, one piece of constructive criticism when it comes to uh, your writing, just in general. Paragraphs are your friend. If you ever think that you should break up a block of text and break it from one big paragraph to two smaller paragraphs, do it. It makes yeah. it so much easier to read. <laughs> More paragraphs, or you think that's dividing it into smaller sections too, because you mm-hmm. a lot, do a lot of times the land description plus the shops plus food stands plus a few walkthroughs all in like one big chunk. I was More struggling with that. I was definitely struggling with that. Yeah. I feel like like just having headings for those different things would have gone a long way. And obviously, you know, this is non-elimination. Like, it's totally fine. You know, these first couple projects are just to kind of get your bearings. I think you're doing a really good job, Muppet fan. I just, you know, I want to see you live up to your full potential. Uh, So, yeah, just make a mental note of that. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay, so indie was pretty great. Oh yeah, like I just I just I mean, love the whole thing. Definitely over the top, uh, in, like <laughs> scale in terms of what be realistic, but also never quite over the top where it couldn't happen. You know what my argument for the over the top thing would be? Mm-hmm. The ride itself is more or less just kind of like a remixed version of Disneyland's indie. Yeah. By all intents and purposes. Like, there's there's a couple elements here and there that are slightly different. And the show scenes are rearranged differently. But it's more or less kind of recycling a lot of elements of the Disneyland indie in a really yeah. cool way. Oh, yeah. Um, just with the original conceit of having the Jungle Cruise be the thing that takes you to the temple. Which is obviously really freaking cool. Plus the Costa segment. Oh, yeah. oh, I forgot about the coaster segment. You know what? That coaster segment, I will say, attaching an EMV to a spinning coaster track. That's that a little the over the top. That's a little over the top. top. But not impossible. Do you know Rhino Rally at Bush Gardens? That used to be. I know place? of it. It was a safari ride, and the Jeep, yeah. which was just a free roaming Jeep, would go onto a bridge, and then, uh oh tsunami or whatever and the bridge would go away and then it would just be a boat ride a jeep would just drive to a spot lock in place and then you're on a boat and you'd be spinning <laughs> down the river oh wow yeah, that's actually was... i'm actually kind of surprised that that doesn't get talked about more just in the community right? it's like a big thing because yeah that's cool yeah um also did they clarify that this was an emv that is something to note because I don't think Red ever did actually. Because low key, it. if it's not an EMV, if it's just a ride vehicle that doesn't do the EMV stuff, then I think that it would be a, a lot more realistic. Yeah, but it did have pictures of the EMV ride or like mm. the artwork of them, so I was assuming. 
uh, which would be a minor note for that and a few other like little things. Uh, and obviously, like with most of the things we say about everyone, nitpicky stuff. But mm-hmm. like one or two scenes or sequences of like the how it works could be explained slightly better just to help immerse us as the readers into the environment. Sure, sure. All right, uh, Muppet fan, honestly, your content wasn't really confusing at all. It was just a lot to a lot to take in, and I truly think that dividing it into uh, into smaller paragraphs along with some good headings to, uh, you know, break up the different categories, that would go a long way with your pros. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get discouraged by that at all. Like, what we're saying is it's not that as confusing, but when it's all in one block of text, it tends to blend together. But if mm-hmm. you break it up more, it can stand out. And you have a mm-hmm. lot of stuff that could stand out if you just tweak how you present it a little bit more. Exactly. Exactly. So Atlantis, low-key, it might have been my favorite thing between the two projects. It was pretty great how it all came together. Mm-hmm. It was definitely I really love the idea of doing the uh, I really love the idea of doing the uh, the indoor outdoor thing. Mm-hmm. I also love the idea of having like the the sunken pirate ship be like in the Atlantis area, like as a way to to tie that all together. That was really novel for me. Really smart transition point. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, but with Atlantis, the the actual attraction. Honestly, I thought that it was uh it was a really great kind of callback to the old school sort of like Pirates of the Caribbean haunted mansion style attractions, albeit with a little less Mark Davis humor. It didn't really have the Mark Davis yeah. humor component to it. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it, just the level of detail, the immersion, uh yeah, it was all it all just kind of fired on all cylinders. It really did. And without ever feeling too over the top, and I really loved the new technology showed off. Like, that's something mm-hmm. I never heard about. I watched that video by Mac, and I was like, can they do that? Is that working, I, how it looks like it works? I did hear about that, that Mac had something like that. But, yeah, it's really impressive to see practically practically used. All right. So, oh, yeah. Oh, Chaos great. Cat missed out on the raft on Rhino Rally the one time they got to ride it. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> that, it broke a lot. <laughs> I don't remember the last time that I went over the suspension bridge on the Universal Studio Tour. That is definitely a bucket list thing I would need to do. I don't I don't even know if they still do it at all, honestly. I still I, I still see it. It's still there physically. I just don't know if it's ever actually part of the attraction anymore. Uh but yeah. It was really cool. I loved Atlantis. The restaurant there was really solid, not too too much to it, but just kind of fit in as part of the land without being anything too specific. Really gave me Mythos vibes. Yeah. I was going to say that in my review, but I thought, am I just saying this because they're both mythology, or is it actually giving me Mythos vibes? But I think it is, and that's a good compliment. Mm-hmm. All right, Tegan, you're good. Uh, let's see. But Tegan... Uh... And honestly, folks, I think we've only, I think I've only seen one vote for Outbound and one vote for Red the whole time. I think so, two votes for Red. Two votes Red. Okay. So, folks, get your votes in for the MVP. And between Pi and I, the person who's who has the MVP on their team is going to get a negative point to bank at the end of the season for their fantasy draft. At the end of the season, we'll put all our negative points together deduct the negative points from our total and see who comes out on top then. It's basically like the Mario Party stars. Mm-hmm. So yeah, get those votes in. There's there's certainly not as much enthusiasm about that as I thought there would be. <laughs> yeah, it's the first night doing it. Uh, but let's see, what else? Was there something else in the... Oh, right, there's the Flat Rides by Ace Astro in the Atlantis Land, mm-hmm. which... I mean, one of them definitely wouldn't be able to walk in the winter. I forget if that was a flat ride. Yeah, splash battle, yeah. Yeah, but still, flat rides I always love. 
I I low key really like the splash battles. There was one at Discovery Kingdom for about five years, and it was a uh, it was a great little addition. I thought um, I, I think those rides are really fun. And the one at Discovery Kingdom was like really small scale. I saw the one at Legoland San Diego. It just wasn't running when I was there. See, it's something I haven't gotten the chance to have a ride like it, but it does look like it would be a blast. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the thing I appreciated cool about the one in... Uh, uh, sorry, what? Uh, I was saying High Tea Cool also just joined us. Yep. The one I appreciated about the one in Discovery Kingdom specifically was that there were water cannons uh, surrounding the ride that guests off-ride could could use, which I thought was really neat and added a kinetic energy that is just not usually at a Six Flags park. I, I like that. That's a fun interaction. Mm -hmm. Although maybe not always fun when things like that happen, because this is a very quick tangent. I was in Animal Kingdom yesterday yesterday and i was on cali river rapids oh god <laughs> and it was a little backed up on the boats just slightly mm -hmm. and i happened to be sat directly in the path of those elephants that spray water that guests can hit oh god. and we were just stopped there for like a solid two minutes oh no and there was a little kid on that bridge just <laughs> button 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 we had, that was our second time riding it, and I barely got a splash on me. And by the time I came off, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm <laughs> wet now. The kid was just like, you know what? This guy's not getting the full Popeye's Bill Dracked barges treatment. Yeah. <laughs> I would have gotten less wet if it rained. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle's not a fan of Cali. I'm not a fan of Cali either. I actually have a funny story about Cali. Um, the yeah. last, was this the last time? It was my last full Disney World trip. And granted, I've only had two of those because all the other times I've been to Florida, it's been like Disney World, Universal, Sea World, Bush Gardens, any sort of combination of those four things. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was like exclusively a Disney World trip. My last day there, it was like by far the hottest day of the trip, right? Like, by far, not even close. All I wanted to do was go on a damn water ride. I remember I was in Hollywood Studios, and it took fucking forever. Like, probably, I'm not exaggerating here, probably a good two hours to bus from Hollywood Studios to Animal Kingdom because of the line for the bus. I mean, it was fucking ridiculous, dude. It was awful. Um, and then when I get to Animal Kingdom, guess what's broken down? Cali River Rapids. And I go to uh, I go to the Expedition Everest single rider, do that a couple times, and I see that uh, Cali's back open. I go to it, which is not far from Expedition Everest, mind you, yeah. and guess what broke down again? <laughs> I kid that you not. Right. That sounds right. I will say, I'm not going to say... It's I a hate fucking ride. River Rapids ride. Really right. It's not like around. it's... It's not like it's Rise of the Resistance. Like, how is that thing breaking down so much? I assume mostly because it's haunted. That's my theory, at least. Really? Is this a cast member thing? N no, I'm joking about it being oh, haunted. you're joking. Okay. <laughs> okay, because be Loki... Explanation, perhaps... Low key, there's a lot of uh, a lot of interesting cast member ghost stories on the Disneyland side of things. We've Not so much Disney them. World. Uh, apparently, for Cali, it's mostly guests who mess things up, and then they have to e stop, and then it's tough to un e stop. Ah, oh, that sucks. Ugh. It's a ride that gives you too much freedom as a guest. Right. I I think that at this point, because any Disney ride, everyone but me. Needs to just be like strapped in, arms <laughs> down, legs down. Just be like, nah, phone away. <laughs> Unless you're me, I'm allowed to. Oh my god, that and would cause a selfie stick into the park immediately. And... <laughs> the ghost of uh, every animal that died at the park haunts Cali. <laughs> that's actually that kind of right. That's a I'm little also, bit of a dark I agree, joke. Dino Land rules, Dino dude. Land can we talk about Dinoland for just a second? Like, 
It's been a long-standing thing with Jokers and I that that land is maybe one of the most underrated lands that Disney has ever it's done. Amazing. Yeah, it's, I mean, just the level of humor, the roadside attraction quality to it, the rural building of the Dino Institute, yeah. it's its a great land. And yeah, freaking Chester and Hester sucks. Yes, it does. But I will say that at least thematically, it fits with the rest yeah. of the land. Like, it might, I, I don't want to spend time in it, but it still fits. It's still cohesive to what the rest of the land is doing. And it really was what Animal Kingdom needed at the time. I think the only real thing holding it back is that not much has been added to Animal Kingdom since then. Yeah, but the thing that pisses me off about that whole thing is, like, with them taking out Dinoland, I feel like Disney is literally just like, you know what, Universal? You got the monopoly on dinosaurs. We yeah. can't compete with you. <laughs> like, I mean, to be fair... Based on experience is kind of true, but I love dinosaur. I love I dinosaur. Love it. I really and love dinosaur. It's like my favorite quick service. <laughs> and stegosaurus are amazing. I have said this before. I'll say it again. It's not a popular opinion at all. Obviously, when it comes to like being just a full fledged attraction, like if you include the queue and the pre show and everything, India is obviously better. But if you just look at it from the ride point of view. I actually prefer Dinosaur. Yeah, Dinosaur Clears. I mean, uh, Dinosaur also, is, like, I, I just, I love, it's one of, it, it's probably the single ride in the Disney canon that I'm still scared by. Like, that Carnosaurus animatronic, man, when that thing, like, starts chasing you. Right? And the creepiest thing to me is that the last call, this is the last thing we'll do off topic. Then we'll get back well, I know to exactly. I know exactly what you're going to bring up. Go ahead. During the last photo when the Carnotaurus is coming down at you, since that's where you do the photo, if that's down, they need something. So it's just a second floating Carnotaurus head in the yep. darkness staring yep. at you. Yep. And you can just like barely catch it if you look at it. That's <laughs> the creepiest thing the first time I noticed it. Tegan says, uh, Countdown to Extinction is seriously my top five attractions at Disney World. Uh, at least that's all great. of Dinosaur's effects work. Yeah, th I mean, that's true. Low-key, that is true. I mean, yeah. Indy, they can't keep those effects working, man. Honestly. Um, Indy, like, Dinosaur doesn't have a section of just nothing going on like Indy does. Like that one hallway with flat painted walls. Speaking of paint, that relates to art. Uh, oh speaking of which, I mean, first off, Monroe Red's are amazing, but also the maps on uh, this team, or the map that uh, a lot of the team did. And this was the team without all the map people. I thought both of them would be the map team. And yet, just about every ride has a layout map, and the map that Muppet Fan did for the whole land is really beautiful. It's one of the most realistic maps I think I've ever seen. Uh -huh. All this too realistic for readability at times. Mm, like, it might be good to have this and then a second map that's just like block, 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 done. But, like, I really, great walk for all the maps and layouts. Chaos Cat says, Indy, the only ride that breaks down more with each rehab. That is objectively true. Objectively true. <laughs> I mean, Dinosaur does break down, but I don't think it breaks down as much as Indy. I don't think so. Like, it's... I mean, it breaks down, but, like, it's not always breaking down. It's not constantly breaking down. There's usually at least two or three dinos that aren't moving that are supposed to move, but not in ways that are that noticeable, because even if they're not moving much, they're still a dinosaur. Mm-hmm. All right, anyways. Uh... Let's see. Oh, I love the Tiki Room quick service. Really delicious sounding stuff. Good oh, mix yeah, of, the like, menu on that was great. Yeah. Right? Great mix of, like, authentic Hawaiian, like, culture and songs, plus just, like, the cheesy Tiki Room corniness. Mm -hmm. Good job on that by T-Cool. Uh, the fountain show in the land. That's just kind of fountains with storm effects throughout the day. Yeah, that was an awesome idea. Love that. 
That one's a Pergram. I'm honestly kind of surprised that more Disney parks don't have fountain shows like that. Because obviously they have Roll of Color, but Roll of Color is like a big, like, that's an event. Yeah. Epcot's pretty much the only one that had something like that, sort of. But only in, like, the hub and, like, a very specific fountain. Hmm. That was a weird, that was a weirdly placed fountain. It was. And it broke it was, a like, lot. Literally like, like, right, it was almost like a bottleneck. Yeah. <laughs> I I wish the new hub had a fountain, even if it was just a small one. But I, I get that if you're redoing it, that's the thing. One of the things to get rid of a move. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. Uh, T. Cool votes MVP for red. Ooh, yep. Another MVP. Uh, Where are we at with the MVP score right now? I think OB is... And yeah, right. Pergram does bring up something I'll mention about the brainstorming. There was some miscommunications with this team going on, uh, especially when it came to like Muppet Fan and the map and the other things that had been planned. It's originally they were going to cut out that whole middle island, but mm. uh, it was just some wires got crossed, something didn't come through, which... It's kind of understandable. This team did so much, and there was so much activity. It's just something to be careful on, because a lot of the plans originally had, like, a big lagoon feel. Like, the Fathom Show program mentions was going to be a really big thing. But then the map was done with an island, and Muppet fan was already walking on the things added to the island. Uh, well, that so right the there... The I... lagoon was scaled back. I do want to say to Muppet fan in regards to the brainstorming, I do think that you need to be more cognitive of you go at a very fast pace. And I feel like for the next round, obviously the brainstorming has already kind of started, but just, you know, keep this in mind moving forward. I really think you need to try harder to just let the other team catch up to you or not the other team, but the other, your, your teammates, you know, don't like, basically what I'm saying is, don't jump into something. Don't jump into like actually writing the content for something until you know for sure that that is what the team wants to do. Yeah, um, and if you're unclear on things because he's mentioned that uh, someone had like he wasn't told what they were doing, so he improvised with the island. If you're unclear, you can always like just message and ask the team. Uh, because I don't know if it was officially decided at that point, but I know it seemed from what I was flipping through decision was to just cut it and do a lagoon uh but you know it's beside the point it's in the past just something to keep in mind the future you're very fast at what you do like you did so much this round and very little of it felt like compromised quality rise because of going fast or speeding through it right guys like, like let's not uh let's not turn this into any sort of like uh you know where we're calling out anybody it, it, this is all in good fun yeah. i don't want to i don't want to see any arguments potentially break out in the comments here um yeah, that's the warm-up around that's the point of it was to get warmed up and get the girl of the team right right uh i, I just i, I do think that just too. i do think that generally speaking when you're working with like you know a brainstorming thread that literally gets like what like 10 pages in the first 24 hours something like that like oh yeah you, you just got to be mindful. And th this goes for everyone, not just Muppet fan. You just got to be mindful. It's it, it's hard. It's hard. It's a challenge. I mean, that's that's honestly one of the big reasons why I didn't want to play this time around. Is that I just did not like. I feel like I could do the writing side of things, but I did not feel like I could keep up with like you know brainstorming. I because it, it's, it's a lot like, of work. Oh yeah, but like T Cool says, it's water under the bridge. And Indeed. speaking of waters and bridges, oh something, again, I'm nailing it with these transitions. You really are. <laughs> uh, we haven't talked about the pirate area yet. I think this is the last yeah. area we haven't really talked about, which Disney Man 1 did the updates to Pirates of the Caribbean, which were nice and subtle, very classic, yeah. a Disney Man 1 specialty. And while there wasn't like a big standout Disney Man 1 project in this one just a little like supplemental writing he did without as always fantastic i feel like that's what we were talking about with him that's kind of where his bread and butter is is those kind of like you know making those supporting projects really good oh yeah uh 
And it was another little thing, but I really like the SS Maudlin, the bar in the shipwreck that's infested with bioluminescent algae. Like, that just sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. All right. Uh, I think that's about it, unless there's other things you need to comment on or have other thoughts you have. I'm scrolling through to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, I did like how there wasn't a ton of details with it, and it was a simple write-up. It was exactly about the length it needed to be, the stunt show that Pilgrim did. Uh-huh. Uh, with the stunt show, though, I will say I did think it was this is this is more of a nitpick than anything else, but I will say it was a tiny bit redundant to have that stunt show and then also have the pirate dinner show. Yeah, I feel like I they kind of feel been... like if you were looking for something to cut, I would probably keep one or the other. Oh, uh, I think my suggestion was since the pirate dinner show was more just like sea shanties. Just said not on a pirate ship, but said right. Like a yeah, 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 yeah. Set. That's that. That really is it. Yeah. Um, the stunt show was planned. The dinner show was not. I should also say that I had a really hard. I, I basically kind of gave up on following the brainstorming after a certain point. So I'm gonna try harder. Like I will say, Pi. Fucking credit to you, dude. I love the prompt for Project Two. I really do. I think the prompt for Project Two is wildly creative and i am I kind of a like, feeling oh. you're gonna really love that one i hope other people do too i'm on the edge of my seat following that like i mean the thing with this adventureland project is that it was kind of hard to follow because everyone was throwing out a lot of ideas it was hard to like you know kind of follow the through line for where those ideas were going i don't think we're gonna have the same problem with this project especially because yeah. it's just one attraction as opposed to a whole land and this was not one I had originally planned. Um, I won't spoil what I had planned because I'm keeping it as a backup in case like I need a different prompt later. But I only put this in when we were doing the like questions of the day in the last week before it. And I asked, well, what parks do you guys want to go to? What are some things you're interested in seeing? And almost like everyone said, I'd love to do something outside this universal bubble. Uh -huh. I love going to this park. I love getting to do that. I'm like, okay. I Gotta make sure I have a prompt about that. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll, this would be a fun way to do it. But spoiler alert, literally every single project after Project 2 is all Dune. <laughs> it's all That's Dune all, all the time, baby! Have you read the good book? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Bringing that back... <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it really <laughs> won't be. I I actually pitched to Pi like, hey, I it'd be cool to do a Doom project, and Pi was like, yeah, maybe you should do that in your own game. I am not against the idea. I just haven't seen either Dune or read the book, so that one's kind of on me. I have not read that good book. No. <laughs> Have. <laughs> I read okay, this so <laughs> I do have that whole set. <laughs> this is my first time reading it. I love it. Go to your nice local sense. library, support libraries. Even if you just get things online, they can mail things to you and it supports them. Even if you don't read it, you can just have it mailed to you, then return it. <laughs> oh, like, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I will say one quick thing about the library from the lat from uh, team team boats project that I forgot to bring up. Um, I assume that the system for the library is going to be like you can't actually check the books out; you can just read them in the in the actual library. I assume that's how it works. There's some practicalities to figure out. Yeah, because I, I kind of feel like you know if you're a I mean I don't know maybe like maybe have it be like a 24 hour rental period or something. If you are going to check it out, I'm just saying like, if, if people are on vacation, it's kind of asking for people to just check books out and then, you know, pocket them as a souvenir. You know what I mean? I feel like the way to do it practically, because I did a library and a project at some point, And how I did it is you had to put on like a regular library, you had to put like a card down 
or link it to like a magic band or a room. I think I did mm. a hotel, so it was linked to your room. So if it wasn't returned, then you got charged for it. Okay, okay that makes gone. sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So while it wasn't gone into, I, that's my feeling on how it'd be done, like practically speaking. Right. So let's see. With the MVP, oh, also libraries do have ghosts. All of them. <laughs> um. Yeah. And uh, LED, just, Dune Baby Woo. Yeah. Just, just not like weird frozen ghosts, like the new Ghostbusters movie. Not those types of ghosts. Well, if the ghosts are frozen, <laughs> then just like Big Al, they'll oh, have no. to learn to let it go. <laughs> Who's our MVP? I think it's red, right? I think it's red. Okay. Very well done. Very great job. Both of them were really MVPs for the team. Their red pulled out an amazing ride, did artwork for everyone, and outbound saw the team was struggling a little bit to find a foot with uh, brainstorming and just kind of stepped up and was like, okay, I'm, how about we have a project manager here? I'll take charge and kind of have brainstorming going. Mm -hmm. Great job all around. All right, so our punishment for Red getting picked as MVP is that Pi and I are now both starting the draft with five points apiece. So remember, we're playing golf rules. The We don't want points, but we got yeah. five points apiece. That gives Ong a good advantage. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, we, I mean, with Orange Bird, like, we, we really can't count them, like, as far as, like, the points go, because obviously they're just going to get the points for, like, wherever Red places, and that's not fair. We got, like, what, like, eight people each on our team? So, with, yeah. with OB, it's very wise, much a, uh, count. It's, it's very much a, uh, like, well, whereas we're playing with a point system and golf rules and all that, OB is very simply like it, it's a win draft. It's like they have to oh, yeah. win for OB to win. Oh yeah. <laughs> Orange Bird and Monorail Red are the real winning team in all of this. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. It really is anyone's game. This you guys again have exceeded my wildest expectations. But look, I, I, I truly feel like every single person in the cast, it, like down the line, there was not one person who did not show up to play this time around. Oh, which, yeah. honestly, I can't even say that for, for So You Want to Be an Imagineer 20. I, I feel like So You Want to Be an Imagineer 20, there at least there's at least one or two people that were just not as active. I think they were all active to a certain extent, but not this active, though. Like oh, yeah. I, I truly think that this is going to be like honestly, once we get into the actual eliminations of the game, I, it's going to be a bloodbath. It really it's is going to be a tough one. Like, it's low key, no, it's going to like, be tough to eliminate. But we we'll have like two whole more rounds, so we got to worry about that. You know, round three. Uh huh. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a fun game. Round three is that? Can you officially confirm that's when eliminations are going to start? Will. We'll see if everyone's still active. We might push it a little bit back, but round three is the first planned elimination. I wouldn't push it back if I were you. I think that we need to keep these people on their toes. I feel like if everyone's active, that's all the more reason to go into elimination mode. Ooh, you raise a good point. Yeah. You might have to become evil pie. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. On that nice note, thing. On that note, have a good night, everyone. Big thanks to Tegan, LEB, Pix, T Cool, Theme Park Priest, Colby, um, Ace was here. Uh, of course, Muppet Fan, Kogios popped in. A lot of people, a lot of people. Thanks oh, to yeah. all of you. Uh, all right, have a good night, everyone. Good night.